this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi. And this is an episode about 119 of Conversations with a Corgi. And we are coming to you live from beautiful Provincetown, Massachusetts, where we're at the Cape Colony Inn, a wonderful pet-friendly hotel that I cannot recommend enough if someone wants to come to beautiful Provincetown with their pet. And behind us is a sunflower because today, we have a topic that is on everyone's mind. What will I do with my pet during the solar eclipse on Monday? Many of us will be at work on Monday during the solar eclipse, and so we will not be paying as much attention to our pets. However, the solar eclipse can be a difficult time for your pet. Often that shift from light to darkness in the middle of the day can be very confusing for your dogs and cats and it can prompt them to want their dinner a little earlier than expected and be quite anxious for the next three hours when you're not there to provide them with dinner if you are accustomed to feeding them dinner in the evening. To offset this, you might hide some treats around the living room for your dog that hopefully he'll find later. You could put together a treat puzzle in a room that he might not likely to go into until later. My dog in particular likes to go upstairs when it's dark, so if I put the treat puzzle in the bedroom, he would have something to occupy him for a little while. In the northeast where we are, the eclipse will last roughly three hours from about 1.30 to 4 or so in the afternoon. And so this is a time when lots of us won't be with our pets. Many people, of course, are, here comes a lovely wiener, um, many people, of course, are taking time off to be able to view the eclipse. And it's really important to protect your pet's eyes during the eclipse. This is not a good time to take your dog for a walk. A small dog looking up at you, maybe looking for a treat or a reward, could inadvertently look at the sun and the rays will be so much hotter at this time that it's a really important thing to protect your pet's eyes. Um, I have a house with a lot of big giant windows and so if I didn't have Tristan with me I would be likely to put him in the smaller room upstairs where I can close the blinds so that his eyes would be protected. This is especially important for people who have horses. It's not a good time, although it sounds romantic, to take a trail ride during the solar eclipse. Your horse's eyes will not be protected on the trail, and horses have a hard enough time coming out of the woods into a light field, and they are not, of course, looking up at the sky most of the time, but with the flies the way they are at this time of year, your horse could be tossing his head, and again, inadvertently, um, get the sun in his eyes. So again, it's a really important time to keep your horse indoors, even if he's out in the pasture, he's not necessarily safe from the sun's rays affecting his eyes. So if you do have a horse, it might be a good idea to bring him into the barn during the eclipse just to keep him safer. Um, the damage that the animals and people could get to their eyes is pretty profound and it doesn't take too long for it to happen and it's also easy to go undetected in your pets. So it's really important that you protect your pet's eyes. Again, not a good time to take your dog for a walk. If you have cats that go indoors and outdoors, try to keep your kitty in tomorrow during the day, just again, to protect their eyes. Your cat could be sitting in the backyard looking up at a tree with a bird in it. Um, and the birds, of course, will be disrupted by this change. And your cat could again, inadvertently get the sun in his eyes at this time. So really important to keep your pets indoors if at all possible. Some of the other tips that you might be able to use if you have a dog in particular um, is, and, or cats, and your home, you can use the T-Touch wraps that we talked about a long time ago on episodes of Conversations with a Corgi. And again, you just need an ACE bandage, sometimes even a knee sock will do if you're in an emergency and you don't have any of this equipment, and you just put it around their chest, cross it on their back, come underneath, and then tie it on the top, not on top of their spine. We don't recommend leaving these on for a really long time, but if you're with your pet for the three hours of the eclipse, it's fine to leave the wrap on him. If you have a thunder shirt, you might want to get it out. Most people are not um, sure at all how their pet will react, and it simply is being dark three or five or 10 hours earlier than it's supposed to be. And so that can be disruptive to their, um, their inner bio clocks, and that's why they will be wanting dinner at a different time, and they may pace and drink more and be anxious. So having a thunder shirt on hand or a wrap, you can use a t-shirt if you don't have a sock, anything that um, will fit around your pet depending on his size. I'm sure for my niece Gwen, she's got a 100 pound pit ridge mix. She could just take a pair of her stretch pants and wrap them around his neck or her tights and around his middle to, well, her, to protect her um, 
body during the, the change in the electrical energy and the solar energy. So wraps are a good thing to keep in mind and you can review my earlier conversations with a corgi. You're just going to be looking at the half wrap in most cases, which is, I don't know, way back there, episode 30 something. Um, and again, if you have a thunder shirt, that's fine. You can also put a t-shirt on your dog and just put a little knot in the back so that he can walk and put it off to one side so that you're not interfering with the motion of the spine. You can do the same with your cat. Most cats, however, will choose to hide, so make sure that your cat has access to his bed. A lot of people now have those little kitty cocoons that they can go into. Make sure your cat has access to that as a place to go because they'll think it's evening. For a lot of cats, this might signal, like my cat, to come out and start prowling around the house because it's dark and causing disruption. So if that's the case, make sure your house is ready for evening kitty prowl for three or four hours tomorrow afternoon. Some other things you might want to keep in mind to prepare your horse or your pets for the solar eclipse are flower essences. Mellow Out is a good one to use if your pet is generally quiet and it will help him be calm throughout the storm. If your pet is prone to trouble during things like thunderstorms, fireworks, loud noises, then you might have to use the panic attack. And a lot of people don't have either of these um, on hand readily, so you can also use Rescue Remedy. And if you are gonna choose to use Rescue Remedy tomorrow for the eclipse for your pet, I would put it um, in their water for tomorrow and also give them a little drop on their tongue or on a treat sometime in the morning and every few hours during the eclipse and that will just help keep them calm. If you forget and you have to use it after the eclipse at five o'clock when you come home from work, that'll work as well and I recommend that even if you have been at work and you haven't been home with your pet and you don't know what's been going on with him, a rescue remedy will just help keep him calm and integrate the experience he's had during the day. So you can use flower essences and wraps and avoid taking your dog out for a walk during the time of the eclipse. Um, some other things you might want to do is use some calming music. Long tones, like a lot of new age music, helps um, unite the right and left sides of the brain and that can help keep your dog calm and you if you're having anxiety about it as well. Um, if you don't have new age music, you have Bach, um, and Strauss, those are particularly good to um, calm the dog as well, or any kind of music with long sweeping tones. Some people have music like recordings from the ocean with sounds of whales, and often that's accompanied by long, low tones, and that helps calm your dog. And of course, there are many CDs, and I have a little box of tunes actually that is particularly for different kinds of pets. I have a hamster one, a dog one, a horse one, and a cat one. You can leave music like that on for your pet as well. So music can be very calming. And then it's a good idea to kind of close the blinds a little bit in the house, maybe halfway, just to, again, have your pet avoid looking up at the sun inadvertently throughout the day when he's surveying the yard from his safe place inside your house. So these are some things to keep in mind. One other thing you can try with your pet in the morning and yourself is helping ground your pet. Pets are generally more grounded than we are, so it might help ground us more than them. But you simply run your hand down the front leg of the dog. When you get to the paw, connect it to the floor. Take a deep breath in through your nose and a deep exhalation out through your mouth. And do that a few times with each of his four paws and that will help ground him and you. It's best to do this in an area where you are close to the actual earth on some natural surface like a wool rug, a hardwood floor, tile if that's what you have. Um, and to do that in an area where your pet feels safe already so that he'll already be calm when you do that exercise. So these are some tips to keep in mind um, and it's gonna be a fun time for a lot of people and we wanna make it a safe time for our pets. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi with some tips about what you can do to keep your pets, your horses and you healthier and happier during the solar eclipse tomorrow. And we will be back with an episode of Conversations with a Corgi on Tuesday because again, tomorrow I will be at my work as an educator where I and a bunch of ex-science teachers will be figuring out different ways to look at the eclipse without looking at it while we're also working. <laughs> so um, I will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And again, we're at the Cape Colony Inn in Provincetown, Mass. A great place to stay if you come here with your pet. <coughs> Biscuit. So thanks for joining us today. Again, this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for Conversations with a Corgi. We've been talking about what to do with your pet to protect him during the solar eclipse on Monday.
it really is a once in a lifetime experience for most of our pets, although the next one is supposed to be in 2024, and I believe Tristan will still be with me by then, and for many of us with younger pets, that will be the case. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day today and enjoy the day tomorrow. This is Sally Morgan. Bye-bye.